Hello, this is Ray Main here again with today's Bible reading. Today we're going to be reading the last chapter in the book of 1 Timothy, which is chapter 6. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Nowadays, there may be some, uh, may be some place in the world, I suppose there are every once in a while you'll hear something about slaves and what not in different countries. But for the most part, in the modern world, this is talking, uh, we can use this to, uh, you know, the people that are, that are, uh, have jobs, you know, uh, count your, your bosses worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. In other words, it's like I was talking about in the last chapter, I believe, it's talking about being an example. You need to be an example because not only your boss, but your co-workers, they see how you act and whether you've said anything or not, they know that you're trying to be a Christian. So if you act wrong, uh, you will cause a shadow on the name of God. Okay. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men with corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Let me stop right here just a minute, because I've, I've got to say something about this. In this day that we're living in, there are way too many so-called preachers on the television and other places, and I assume that they're in the church houses, that all they talk about is getting your money back from the devil, that kind of stuff. If you just send in a $1,000 offering to our deal, send your bills, we'll pray over them, and God's going to take them away. That is nothing but foolishness. Don't fall for that stuff. It says right here, pretty plain, from such withdraw thyself. All right, and that's all I'm going to say about it. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. That's where a lot of us are having trouble in it. You know, there's a lot of hungry folks in the world. If you're getting plenty to eat and, and you've got a roof over your head, uh, you know, just thank God for it. So, said, but they that will be rich fall into a temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Why is that? Because you can get so, here's, the, here's my interpretation of that, is that you can get so bent and so set on money and being rich that you forget about God and whenever you forget about God then he kind of steps back from you and uh, you can get into all kinds of things you know so be careful for the love of money is the root of all evil you hear a lot of people let me read the rest of it which while some coveted after they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows you hear a lot of people preach you know that that money is evil uh, anybody that, that wants money is evil and all like that, but I guarantee you those same ones that are preaching that, uh, they're trying to get all of it they can. It's not that money is evil. We've all got to have money of uh, some denomination in order to buy the things that we have need of. But the love of money, whenever you get to where that, as I said before, where money is the thing uh, over God, in front of God, that's when you get in trouble. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. 
lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the, loving, the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store from themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, while some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. So that's the end of the first Timothy, the first letter to Timothy at the church at Ephesus, uh, trying to show him how to be the man of God that he was sent there to be and telling him to be careful about the love of money. It's better to uh, seek after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness than money. Money's a trap, but it's needful. There's not anything in this chapter that says to, uh, you know, that uh, he's talking against money. He's talking about the love of money. All right? Y'all have a blessed day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.